So we're getting to the business end of our European campaign. We have Lokomotiv Moscow in the second knockout round of our Europa Conference League. So we've only played one game in the league since the last time we met. And our schizophrenic Premier League form continues. We absolutely demolished Crystal Palace 7-2 away from home. Guido Bomber, our centre-back, got a hat-trick of headers from corners. To, to, I mean, we were 2-0 down in this game. 2-0 down. Victor Hugo Cruz with one. Bastian Selvagen with one, who of course is in because Walter Delonso is still injured. And Annabel Zarate with a brace as well, completing our 7-2 win. And that sees us lie in fourth position in the Premier League. Champions League qualification is what we are aiming for now. With only 10 games to go, we are 10 points off Manchester City. And it is just a step too far. Our former side Leeds currently sitting in second. Barnsley sitting in fifth. Huddersfield in eighth. Birmingham in tenth. Nottingham Forest in 13th. Crystal Palace in 17th. And West Brom currently sitting in the relegation zone in 18th. Luis de Cordova's third top goal scorer. Annabel Zarate is second in both assist and average rating. The boys are doing pretty, pretty well. And yeah, we definitely got an A-plus for that 7-2 win against Palace. So today then, boys, we have Lokomotiv Moscow. We are at home in the first leg, which isn't exactly ideal. I would prefer to be away from home. Uh, we seem to be pretty level in terms of the match odds from the media. And we continue with our disappointing thing where we've got to start Guido Bomber at right wing back. He has decent stats for that position, to be quite honest with you. It's just unfortunate that, obviously, he's not quite competent in that role. The rest of the first 11, then Zverevich will start in goal. David Nuno and Zach Howes will be our centre-backs. Bomber and Radek Rada will start as our wing-backs. With Mario Buckle starting in the defensive midfield position. Vitaly Sokolov and Mauricio Chan will continue in the centre of midfield. Victor Hugo Cruz and, uh, playing in behind Annabel Zarate and Luis de Cordova. Let's get into the game. Hopefully we just smash them in this first leg just to really make it comfortable. Let's have another 7-2 victory if we can. But I'm not anticipating that. Lokomotiv Moscow then. Any familiar names whatsoever. They've got Tavares, the only real player in their starting eleven, And he's a fantastic right back on the game. 35 years old though with them. <laughs> Them physical attributes. Come on, boys. We've got we've got to beat these. Let's get into the game and see how we get on. First high the game comes one minute in. We are on the attack. Down the left-hand side, Radic Rada plays it in. Zarate's header is blocked. And it might end up being a Moscow counter-attack. Campagnaro bringing it forward for them. He holds up the ball. And Victor Hugo Cruz pinches with a, from a loose pass from them. He goes into goal. It's a decent save by Gonzalez, the goalkeeper, to keep Lokomotiv Moscow at nil-nil. But we do have a corner, and we are very dangerous from corners. Uh, maybe not with Guido Palmer not playing at centre-back. That's one of the issues with setting up your corner tactic. Whoever is in Guido Palmer's position will now be the guy that we're aiming the uh, corners at. And on that note, we are going to switch David Nuno and Zach Howes. David Nuno is good in the air as well. So him being in Bomber's position will mean he will be the one that the corners are aimed at. <laughs> And we'll see if he can get himself a couple of goals today. 25 minutes gone. Lokomotiv Moscow on the attack. But they give the ball away. We clear it to Luis De Cordova, who drives through the centre. Completely does his man. Sokolov is now. He's in behind. And Vitaly Sokolov from central midfield gets his 10th goal of the season. An assist for Luis De Cordova. He's usually the man on the score sheet. But he's turned and provider to He does fantastically well. Winning the ball in the centre of midfield. Completely rides the challenge. From the midfielder and Sokolov with a tidy finish at the back post. Another highlight now. It's a goal kick for Lokomotiv Moscow which they do win. They keep the ball pretty well in midfield. But Radek Rada is there to pinch it off them. Luis de Cordova heads it on. Zarate is in behind. Zarate, yeah, come on. You've got to be finishing that. We do get a corner out of it though. And he will be the man who steps up to take it. He whips it in. De Cordova gets there first. And he can't quite get it on target. Come on lads. One more goal before half time. Put us 2-0 up. Going into the second half, Radic Garada on this left-hand side, a buckle to Victor Hugo Cruz, who's no doubt going to find the right wing-back. Guys, you can see Guido Bomber's not um, getting forward as much as Stelvagen or Walter Delonso would have. He's definitely more reserved in his attack and play, and that's definitely caused us some issues there. We would have been attacking much faster if Delonso or Stelvagen was playing, but we switch it back to the left-hand side with Radic Rada. Mauricio Chan, there's the open space for Rada. He keeps it in just about. He whips it in. Decord over hits the bar. And the keeper claims it easily. A decent first half. Not quite as clinical as the Crystal Palace game. But we'll kick off for the second half. 
and hope we can be a bit more clinical in this one. Zarate with a free kick straight away. Goes for goal. Gonzalez with a save. We do end up getting ourselves another corner out of this. Our fourth corner of the game. It's going to be Victor Hugo Cruz from this side. And Zarate can't get his header on past the keeper. It is complete domination by us uh, in this game so far. Radic Rada coming down the left-hand side. This time Zarate is in the box. We need, a, we need another goal. 1-0 is not enough going into the away leg with this amount of domination that we're having currently. 58 minutes gone then. Guido Bomber wins the ball on this right-hand side after a poor kick from the local Moto Moscow goalkeeper. We go all the way back and rebuild from the back. Continue with the highlight that finds its way to Mauricio Chan in the midfield. Decord overs on the left-hand side. He plays it back to Mario Buckle. He is the playmaker in the deep lying places that we need. Sokolov! Almost gets his second of the game, but another good save for Gonzalez. Their goalkeeper is definitely having a pretty good game. Cruz with the corner. Oh, we go close. David Nuno. Say we will, <laughs> in the Palace game, would score about three corners by now. We've gone close a few times, but that's why uh, we need Guido Bomber playing in that defensive position. We're going to take off Radic Rada, who's struggling a little bit for Oleg Karabov. Ten minutes to go. We'll look to make a couple of changes. Guido Bomber can come off. My assistant manager is recommending Chris Jubelbiss. I'm actually going to bring on Brank or Milanovic, neither of which can play ideally there. We're also going to bring on Frankie Grand. But he is pretty well-rounded, um, especially physically, so he should, even in a diminished attribute role for him, he should be okay there. We have a free kick. Cruz plays it in. Gonzalez, acrobatic tip there. He probably should be claiming it and uh, keeping a hold of that. But we do keep possession, and the highlight will continue. Buckle to Zach House to David Nuno. A lot of space on that left-hand side in the gaps. Luis de Cordova picks it up. He cuts inside. He finds a Branko Milanovic on this right-hand side. Come on, lad. He gets past his man. He gets past two. He plays about a Frankie Grand, and he should be burying that. Milanovic, in an unusual position, does fantastically to beat two men. And Frankie Grand doesn't make the most of the opportunity. With four minutes to go, it looks like it might end up finishing 1-0. Or our locomotive Moscow going to get a goal back. Stock plays it in. Goes all... I mean... <laughs> hey... Oh well, lad. What are you doing there? <laughs> and there we are, full time. The first leg does finish. Stoke City 1, Lokomotiv Moscow 0. Not ideal. Not ideal at all, but we take the lead to the second leg. We've got West Brom in the FA Cup in between, so we'll play that and show you the result. And uh, I'll see you at the kickoff of the Lokomotiv Moscow game. So we've just been beat by West Brom in the FA Cup fifth round. After extra time, we did rotate slightly to keep some of our boys fresh for the Europa Conference League game. Valentin Pickard, our £45 million, I think it's fair to say a flop, ends up getting the only goal of the game in the 120th minute to knock us out of the FA Cup. So, we are at the second leg against Lokomotiv Moscow. We come with a pretty much unchanged side. Guido Obama once again st having to start at right wing back. I, st I think Walter Delonso is still out for another three weeks, which will be a little bit gutting. But we're going to have to tr truck on, get on with it, and let's see if we can get the result against the local motor of Moscow. So as you can probably tell at the bottom, local motor of Moscow will play on a, is it a 4G pitch? Um, anyway, it's not a real pitch, so that's why it looks so different. It looks pretty grey. And it also looks like it's snowing. So uh, hopefully that doesn't affect the game too much. Victor Hugo Cruz, David Nuno with a header after the corner. Oh, he's offside. Or is he pushing it? Uh, he wasn't offside. Goal review. Why? I have no idea. It was offside apparently, but... Uh, Nice to see David Nuno winning the header from the corner, what would usually be Guido Bomber. We'll bring on Ole Korobov for Radic Rada, who's picked up a bit of a knock. Pointless uh, risking him for the rest of the game when we've got someone of Korobov's quality to come on from the bench. Four minutes to go in this first half. We ourselves another corner. Zarate plays it in. We win the header again, but it's not going close enough. Come on, boys. We need one goal. And now we have it. Local Moto Moscow nil. Stoke City nil. We're completely dominating the game. In fairness, we are really looking strong, but we need a goal. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the snow, about the pitch, and <laughs> everything in between. Korobov comes forward down the left-hand side. He tries to whip it in. Mauricio Chan does so. Cruz is in the box. And Victor Hugo Cruz's eighth goal of the season surely now seals the tie if we can continue the domination for the rest of this match. Korobov doing well down the left-hand side. His cross is a bit of a failure, but it comes back to Mauricio Chan. Decord over layers it off for Cruz. And it's a decent, tidy finish. Another highlight now. We win the ball from a free kick from Moscow. And Decordova's in behind. It's a tight angle. And I don't think he was ever going to beat Gonzalez from that position. Another highlight now. Buckle playing it out from the back. He finds Zokolov. 
<coughs> Zaratia's uh, punt up top was blocked by the local Moscow players, but we do retain possession in the midfield. Chan through to De Cordova and Luis De Cordova's 22nd goal of the season is going to result in me making some substitutes. We want to give game time to Frankie Grant. We're going to take off Annabel Zaratia. And I want Branko Milanovic to get some game time as well. We'll bring off Mauricio Chan, who is currently on a yellow card. That is all three of our substitutes used, but I'm not too concerned about it, to be quite honest with you. Hopefully, we can see out the rest of this game without any further injuries or red cards. I'm looking at you, Korobov. Um, 15 minutes to go. Another highlight now. It's going to be a free kick for us from a pretty deep position. Victor Hugo cruises the man to take it. He plays it in back post. Zach Howes, what a header that was. Put up a fantastic save by the goalkeeper. We get ourselves another corner, though. Cruz will be the man to take a deck over the back post. Sokolov, is he offside? He's not offside. Vitaly Sokolov's 11th goal from the season. Set pieces once again, proving to be critical for us in terms of goal scoring. And a fantastic header on by Deck Cordova and fantastic header by Vitaly Sokolov. Another free kick. Cruz to play it in. Back post, it is cleared. And Kalin Bekov. Kalin Bekov? <laughs> Come down the right hand side for. Uh, for local model Moscow, the ball's played through through the middle. What a fantastic challenge that was. Who was that? Was that Zach House? It was David Nuno. It's going to be a corner for local model of Moscow, though. Uh, Larionov is the man that played in. We get a clear. Milanovic. Is that the end of the highlight? It was, and it's going to be the end of the game. Moscow nil. Stoke City 3. We are safely through to the quarterfinals, where we will now go out and find out, hopefully, where who we will play. So Leverkusen made it through past Zenit. Braga past Livingston. Genoa. Past Dundalk, Slavia Prague past HJK, Krasnodar past Dynamo, Hearts past LESK, and Vitesse past Malmo. So not too many surprises there. I think you would have bet on most of those sides to be able to beat the opposition. Couple of days to the draw. I will see you there. Here we go. Then we're going to have the quarter-final draw and the semi-final draw today. So if we do meet past the quarters, we will know who we will likely to be facing. Slavia Prague are the first side drawn. Against Braga, I just really want to avoid Bayer Leverkusen, if at all possible. Hearts versus Genoa, it's getting down to it. Plays no Stokes at 8, Hearts for Tess here. So we get Krasnodar. Hopefully, that is a decent little result for us. We'll quickly check the Krasnodar squad, see who the key player is. It's Yvan Mbala. And he is pretty good at 29 years old. He is leaving the club to join Zenit at the end of the season. But if he's their key player, I think we can be relatively confident... That our squad is better than theirs. Let's go and view the semi-final draw now. Again, we just want to avoid the Bayer Leverkusen until hopefully the final, if we can get their hearts. Or do you know we want this? Ah, so if we do make a pass Krasnodar, the likelihood is we will be facing Bayer Leverkusen in the semis. Tough, tough draw. Let's have a look at Bayer Leverkusen's best player, Jose Maria Garcia. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's not, he's not stupendous. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cough there. I am sure I have seen better players than him. A wonder kid right back, a pretty wonder kid left back, Stefan Bell, I recognise his name, he's decent. It's a very young Bayer Leverkusen squad as well, which is interesting. 20 year old Paul, 20 year old, I mean, they've got wonder kids splattered throughout their squad. Um, So it's going to be a very, very tough tie. But of course, we've got to get past Krasnodar first, which will be the next episode, only a few games in between. And I will see you there. So anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.